Hey, what's up everybody? My name is JR Maddox and in this episode, I'm going to show you how I use the clone and the patch tool in Photoshop. So here, as you can see, I have a photo that I took while in, on vacation in Dublin, Ireland. So I have, as you can see here, some people in the shots that I don't want to have them in the shot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to clone or use the patch tool to get rid of those people. It's a simple process, but I'm just gonna show you when I use it and when I use the clone or I use the patch tool. So this is the before picture, and this is what we'll end up with in the after picture with a little bit of editing. So let's get started and open this bad boy up in Photoshop. We're gonna right click, go edit, and edit in Photoshop. And then we're just gonna wait for days. Days, I tell you, days. All right, so I'm going to hit Command J and duplicate that layer. And then I'm gonna zoom in here and use my patch tool. And as you can see, I'm just going to go right around that and then just drag it. Pretty simple. And as you go around, you'll notice that when you drag to a new spot, you kind of want to line it up with what rocks or whatever the, uh, the background is. And in some spots, you're going to want to make sure the background is similar to the one you're dragging to. And if you like, later on, I will show you the diffusion so your edges are a little bit softer. And as you can see here, we're just trying to line up that grass on the wall. And doing the same thing over here, line up that grass so it kind of lines up and <clears throat> it looks really good. And in some of these, you can see a little bit of a hard edge line around it, but we'll get rid of that later. And here, I'm trying to use the patch tool, which the clone stamp tool would be much better for this job, but I'm just trying to see what I can get away with on the patch tool here and it works really really good but when you have different colors like this like the black and the whites the grays the green it's really hard but the way I'm doing it is basically really working well in the sense that I'm zoomed in at 300% on this picture and you're not going to be able to see that much detail but we do want to kind of keep it as clean as possible and with the patch tool we do tend to get some blurriness like you see there but for this image it is not as high res because it's so far away we are just trying to get an overall good looking image with the patch tool and towards the end we will come in with the clone stamp tool and kind of try and fix some of those edges later on in the uh, in this process Now here I'm going to use the clone stamp tool and I'm going to come right over there and clone this spot right next to it and then make sure that the top of this roof gets perfectly lined up and the clone stamp tool does an awesome job here. I just feel like if I was to use the uh, patch tool it would be a little too blurry and I mean you could get away with it but I think the clone stamp tool does a better job when it's up against two different colors like that, like the sky and the castle that you saw there. And could I use the clone stamp tool for all of this? Yes, most definitely could. I'm just showing you how you could do this with the patch tool, and the patch tool may or may not be always the best tool. That's what I love about Photoshop. There are so many tools you can do so many different things with those tools and as you can see here the clone stamp tool was it the best tool yeah maybe not so i'm using the patch tool to kind of help fix those edges up a little bit just trying to make sure that they're all lined up and uh, you could technically even use your clone stamp tool just at a lower opacity or basically like i'm doing here i'm going to lower down my flow i i prefer to lower the flow rather than the opacity And again, this does not have to be perfect, 
as this is at 500% and no one's gonna be able to see that much detail, but I also don't want to be sloppy either. And as you can see here, here's some of those lines that you saw from the patch tool. And they're very, very minimal and very easy to fix with the clone stamp tool. And yeah, I could have used the clone stamp tool, but I find it sometimes easier to use the patch tool in situations like this. And here I will use the patch tool to get rid of this house that was in this background here and just fill that in. And it's already so blurry that I don't necessarily think it's going to matter if I'm using the patch tool here. And here I'm going to lower that or raise the diffusion up to seven. And that's going to help soften up our edges. And I'm just going to look around here on all the edges of the castle, make sure that everything is good. And I believe it is. And go through here and get rid of these power lines. And then we'll put the diffusion down to one. That makes our edges really, really hard. So in hopes to not be blending in the bushes that are right next to those power lines. So if you have it at a smaller diffusion rate, it won't be so blurry around the edges. Therefore, the edges that it's close up to, like I said, the bushes, we're hoping that it won't blur as much. Here I'm going to use the uh, clone stamp tool to get rid of this building here. I find it in areas like this, the clone stamp tool does a really, really good job. But I'm going to come back in and use the patch tool, kind of blend those lines a little bit better. <clears throat> and that's why using the patch tool and the clone tool together are just great tools. And as you can see here, I'm going to use the patch tool and I'm just going to bring it over here and bam. There you go. Looks really good. And we're going to just do the uh, clone stamp tool and get rid of this edge here. I'm going to turn down my, my flow, which I'm accidentally uh, doing my opacity right now. So I'm going to come in here and do flow instead. And that's a real subtle, soft edge brush. So it just should blend in just perfectly. And there you go. That house is gone. And here I'm gonna try out um, the patch tool and just test out the diffusion rate that we have there. And as you can see, it's pretty harsh edge. And now we're gonna put it to seven and see how much different it is. And I feel that's a lot softer edge at seven than it would be at one. So checking out the whole image as a whole, I feel like it's looking good. And there we go before and after. And I think that looks a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and Command J to duplicate that layer. And then I'm gonna come into Nick Collection here and I'm going to see if there's anything they could do just playing around at this point I mean I've cleaned out everything that I wanted out of the photo so now we're just pretty much playing around and uh, we'll see what we can uh, what we can do in Nick's collection software And all of these filters can be edited. I just like to scroll through them just to give me an idea of kind of where I want to go with the image because sometimes I really don't even know. I'm just playing around until I get to something that I see that sparks a little bit of inspiration.
I'm really liking the um, the the reddish color, and you can enhance it by raising up the uh, the foil the foliage from zero to a hundred. I usually like it right around you know 20 to 40 area. Turn it all the way up, and then it gets like nuclear color. And then if you bring it all the way down, you kind of have that mid area. So you just got to pick which one you like, which method you want. There's one, two, three, and four. And uh, I really like this method here. Just kind of tones down the greens to a little bit more fallish color. And from here, we're going to go back into. Um, our filters and we're gonna to go to Topaz Labs and scroll down to uh, Clarity and again you can do all this in Photoshop manually I just like sometimes to use these filters because it kind of helps move things along and helps out with a little bit of the creative process I mean it's just another tool to use so here in landscapes, you have a bunch of different presets that you can use and you can manipulate those over here on the right hand side, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen. But if you scroll through these, you'll be able to see different views of what that filter is going to look like. And I really like the color and contrast boost. And <clears throat> that right there alone, I think looks great. So I'm just gonna leave it as is and just hit okay. And here you can see what it looks like before and after. And I am really liking where this is going. So that basically is where this ends at. I play around in, in Photoshop with some of the filters that I have and that I use. I don't use them on all my photos, but that is how I would use the clone and the patch tool in Photoshop with the, a little bit of editing. And now what I would do is I would just hit Command S and then Command W. I like shortcut keys and what that's going to do is save it and then it's going to close it in Photoshop and then it's going to save it right back into Lightroom and once I get back into Lightroom I can do any kind of other edits that I want to do like maybe bring up a little bit more of the contrast or tone down the contrast whatever your flavor is it's entirely up to you so art and photography it's all subjective so you may like it somebody else might not like it doesn't matter it's all about what you like so if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit that little notification bell so you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you guys soon all right take care